Okay, so I came out here to um, Ferncliff State Park. I'm doing some camp tonight, camping tonight, hoping to do some testing on my tarp. They uh, say that um, it's supposed to storm tonight and everything, but uh, I camped recently on a night it was supposed to storm really bad to test a tarp, and it ended up not being bad. But hopefully tonight it, it'll the storm will come through. I was talking to the park ranger here at Ferncliff, and uh, when I found out I was looking for a site, he suggested that I go down the hill because the storm was coming tonight. And I said, well, actually, I, I'd like to be in the middle of it. And he said, well, if you want to get the most of the storm, the, the uh, wind and all that stuff, he said, come up here to site 20. So that's what I did. And uh, I went, I found two trees right here. I like the distance and everything, but that one tree is just a little iffy. It's um, if it's not dead, it's pretty close to being dead, and uh, and especially tonight if the storm does co come through, I just decided I didn't want to take my chances, so I'm going to move over here to this other tree and get everything set up. So I barely got it um, before it started raining. Uh, it's not bad yet, but it's enough to get my hammock and all that stuff wet if I wouldn't have got the tarp up when I did. Right now it's kind of chilly because it's um, in the mid 50s and uh, you know overcast and raining. And even before the rain, the air was just really damp. It's supposed to say this temperature about. To, uh, pretty much all day and all night. It's supposed to stay around 55, but then with chances of heavy rain and wind and all that stuff, I'm gonna at some point take a walk down to uh, there's a waterfall and a couple other bluff areas and stuff. I'm gonna do some hiking down through there and get some video and pictures of all that stuff, but um, that's it for now. So, this is what I got. As you can see, it's uh, a car camping. My car is right there. And uh, so since I'm car camping, I decided just to take it easy and have a, just bring my stuff out in a tote. And um, then it's nice and dry and all that good stuff. And, and the road's right there. So it's not like I'm out in the middle of nowhere or anything. But um, I'm get my, finish getting my tarp staked out and do everything I need to do get all situated and then hopefully if there's a rain if I can get a break in the rain I'll get out there and and uh, do some walking around some of these trails 
It blends in good with those leaves. One thing I did not take into consideration when building this tarp is uh, with the pullouts and stuff. Um, the doors, having the doors inside, they're still hanging down here. They're not pulled out. And, uh, you know, there's a pretty big gap between where the door is and where the tarp is because the tarp's pulled out, but these aren't. So that's one thing I did not take into consideration. I can, if I don't want to use the doors, I can clip them on the outside to get more room. But I like having them clipped on the inside just in case uh, weather does turn bad. I wake up in the middle of the night and it starts raining real hard or something. I can just stay under the tarp and unclip them and stake them out instead of having to go outside to get them. But I don't know, something I'll just have to work around. Okay, so I got it all sealed up now. Um, had to do that a little wonky because of the there's a tree right there. This is a really short hang, um, especially for my tarp. My tarp uh, just barely, barely has enough room to stretch out. That's one thing to definitely take into consideration when you're buying a tarp. Um, you know, 11 foot ridge line, 12 foot ridge line, 13 foot ridge line. Uh, this is a good hang for my hammock, but at a 12 foot ridge line, my tarp just barely fits. So, um, uh, 13 foot, you know, uh, you think a lot more coverage and all that kind of stuff, but, uh, um, I would definitely not go any bigger than a 12. I've always kind of thought that, and this is a pretty good example. And the other side here, I got set up. I just, uh, the storm's going to be coming from the wind. I don't know if we're actually going to get a storm or not, but the wind is going to be coming this way. So I got this door is inside, um, so the wind won't catch it. The, this door on the left is inside of this door, and the same thing on the opposite side. The way the wind won't catch it and uh, start blowing it open and blow all kinds of wind in here. But um, got to get me some kind of hammer. These stakes here, the ground here is hard as a rock, and I got all my stakes are quite a ways up in the air, so I got to go. Give me something to beat on these with a little bit. Another thing, since I'm testing this tarp, that's why I'm talking about tarps a lot. But an another thing to take into consideration if you're thinking about buying a tarp or a new tarp or whatever, or just getting into hammock camping or, or just tarp camping, any, anything at all in general. So a lot of people you see, their tarps are quite a ways up off the ground and that allows some air to flow through there and they everybody says oh you know you got to do that otherwise condensation and everything you know i if it's cold if it's in the middle of winter i don't care about condensation you know i want to stay warm and uh this tarp is not very high off the ground um it's just uh a little less than elbow if i have my fingers extended and touch the ground it's just uh, a little less than the height of my fingers to the, my elbow but sitting here I can feel that breeze coming under here and uh, that kind of sucks and I can't really go any lower because this is my uh, ridge line on my hammock and then just a couple inches above that is a ridge line on my tarp so I can't really bring the tarp down lower to, to get rid of that that gap there and um, it's something I've always, this is a standard width tarp, it's 58 inches from the ridge line down to the edge and um, the only way I could have done this, I thought about adding another strip of material down along the edge, but um, it cost so much, it would have been, with this printed material, it would have been another $80 for the material to add that strip to be able to fill in that gap and um, I just, at the time I decided it wasn't worth it if it would have been a solid color or something it would have been cheaper but this printed material you know it would have been another $80 to add that strip in and I can't go any lower the hammocks about I could maybe bring the hammock down and hit a couple inches and still be comfortable sitting but um, that's not going to gain me anything not not when it's that high off the ground over there 
So just something to consider when when you're considering buying a new tarp. Um, they, they have some wide material. I, I, I can't get this printed material uh, in that wide material yet, I don't think. But um, some consider the size of your tarp, your ridge line. You know, I definitely wouldn't go longer than a 12 foot ridge line. And um, the height of it, if, you, if you're gonna be using it in the winter time and it's cold, where, really cold where you live, you wanna kinda seal that up as much, in my opinion, you wanna kinda seal that up as much as possible. A lot of people say, oh yeah, you, you know, condensation and everything. <laughs> like I said earlier, I don't care. It's cold air and uh, I got quilts and all that kind of stuff, you know, to keep me warm, but still, any wind you can block is gonna help out. And, uh, and uh, I don't know, it's just bad one, just thoughts I have as I'm testing this tarp and everything. Just um, looking at ways to, I, it's, I haven't finished building the tarp, there's still some things I wanna do to it, but um, just kind of thinking out loud. When I was down walking around, looking for, trying to decide which side I was going to stay at, there was a, one of the guys that works at the park, I don't know if he's a game warden or what, but he was going around checking on things, and uh, I was asking him about some of the different trails out here, and if there was any other place to camp out here. One of the things that, uh, one of the trails that come through here is the River to River Trail, that 160 mile trail that goes from... Uh, the Ohio River to the Mississippi River and I had mentioned about you know I know that for the most most places along that trail you can just camp randomly as long as you get off the trail you know 150 200 feet and he said because uh, the river it, it crosses through right just down the hill from me and um, he said that uh, well you can't um, camp on the trail uh, as it's going through the park you have to get outside of the boundaries of the park before you can camp and he mentioned that there's a game warden that patrols this area and he walks up and down the, you know all the trails and everything looking for people and and stuff uh, and he said so you know it wouldn't be a good idea to camp down there and I was thinking you know that just makes a challenge for me I'm pretty sure I can go down there and well, I, I know I can go down there and camp, stealth camp, and nobody even know I'm there. I make it down there and back. Um, but uh, I don't know. He told me not to do it, and it just makes it makes it more of a challenge. Makes me want to do it. I'm hanging out. I'm going to change into a uh, rain suit here in a little while and go down and uh, hike some of the trails and stuff. It's kind of cold and nasty, but uh, I can get out there walking around and I'll be fine. And then I got some dry clothes to change into when I get here, get when I get back here. So I'm out here, this is where the River to River Trail crosses Fern Cliff, and it's part of the uh, American Discovery Trail. I can't remember the exact name of this trailhead, but um, it's just right down from the primitive camping, so I'm going to go check it out and see what I can see. It's raining out here, but not enough to uh, that thing right there would be a pretty cool little waterfall if it was had been raining really heavy. I don't know, maybe in the morning after it rains tonight. Maybe there'll be some water coming down there. So I'm out here checking out the bluffs behind me and <clears throat> there's some bigger ones down there and then some more I'm going to go to. Um, but trying tricking poles uh, for the first time ever and I really didn't think I would like them because I had I saw, I saw a meme recently that um, I can't remember exactly what the person said but he's making fun of somebody with trucking poles and he's like hey great job big shot you know you, you just trekked the same trail that some five-year-old kid with a 
Snow White backpack and and Crocs made, you know. So some along that lines of making fun of somebody walking with trekking poles, but um, and I always had the same kind of at, I, same kind of attitude, you know, like why, why would you need just to walk, you know, any trail at all, a set of trekking poles? But I've been having a lot of problems with uh, um, my knees and stuff. Not so much my knees as as I used to, but still problems, and uh. I, I could really see the advantage of these, yeah, you know, walking up and down hills and then uh, uh, a lot of spots back there coming down a hill with a lot of ruts and rocks and everything and the, the stability that the trekking poles give you and uh, the saving some wear and tear on your body. I, I can definitely see that um, I should have probably tried them a lot sooner. This is a root from this tree um, crossing the trail. It's really weird. I wonder what made those things. I, I guess probably limbs that were starting to grow up from the root or something and got broke off. So that's the only thing I can imagine. Looks kind of cool though. I really want to go up in here. There's a uh, cave right up in there. And uh, I'd really like to go up there and check it out. But it's pretty slick down here at the bottom because of the rain and stuff. It's slick anyway because the uh, um, moss and stuff growing over, over it. But, uh, I'd really like to go up there and check it out, just a curiosity, but one thing I've learned over the years is uh, you always say, when you're getting ready to do something stupid, you always got to ask yourself where you're at, and what I mean by that is like in this situation, I'm not very far, maybe half a mile, three quarters of a mile from the car, but um, it's raining and there's not many people out today, so pretty good chance I could fall and hurt myself pretty bad and and uh, it's late enough in the evening that nobody would make it through here. So I'd have to spend the night all broken and busted. So I'm going to have to skip out on my little curiosity um, this time. It's places like this little hill that I really could tell the difference with these trucking poles. I'm really, really liking them. I didn't want to, but I'm really liking them. Starting to hear some people, so means I'm getting getting pretty close to being back to the parking lot.
So one of the things I'm doing is uh, um, testing out the pad. Uh, it's a self-inflating pad. And what I mean by testing it out is how low a temperature can I go and use the pad comfortably to stay warm. Um, tonight's supposed to, I've tried it before in like the mid upper 60s. Of course, that was no problem. And then uh, tonight's supposed to be down in the mid to lower 50s. So uh, I'm going to see what it does tonight and just keep kind of taking it lower until I reach that point where it's uh, not providing enough insulation. So I got up this morning and uh, getting ready to get my stuff packed up. I was planning on doing a trail at a, uh, down to a waterfall, but I don't know if I'm going to do that today or not. Um, head I, when I woke up this morning my head was pounding um one good thing when you're uh for people that are considering what hammock suspension to get i got uh, uh, my straps right here um if you have something like a dutchware beetle buckle uh or autumn ultralight's got a new buckle um that your hammock can disconnect from and uh, so in a situation like this where if it's going to be raining a lot you're going to be spending a lot of time in the tarp or whatever um, you could take your hammock down and especially if you got somebody else with you you can pull up a couple chairs in here and, and uh, got plenty of room um, and you don't have to redo your suspension and everything you just unclip from it and it stays on a tree everything's hooked up the angles are right, the link's right, everything's right. You just, when you get ready to put your hammock up, you just clip it back in and you're good to go. If if you were using the cinch buckles, you would have to redo everything. So then uh, it less of a, you know, makes it so you don't really want to do it. You'd rather just have less room so you don't have to go through all that again. But um, it's one thing to consider when getting suspensions. Um, a voice like that. Uh, being able to connect, disconnect from it and stuff. For the people that are following along with the uh, tarp and uh, my new hammock, um, the hammock, it's got the top cover with that vent on it. And uh, if you haven't seen it, it's just look back and it's one of our recent videos uh, of uh, my new hammock. It's hex cam, it's the same pattern as the tarp. And it's got a vent that runs across angled um, on the top cover the same way you lay last night it was in the mid 50s and uh raining off and on you know it's a lot of moisture and stuff in the air and fog and stuff and i thought there was going to be quite a bit of condensation but there really wasn't it was like from where the vent is by my head it, from there <clears throat> from there up to the peak there was a little bit but the rest of it was pretty dry so um that was that was pretty good um pretty happy with that i still think top covers are kind of a a waste really because if you're camping in winter time you know you could save weight by not having a bug net and top cover it, it they don't really hold in a lot of heat um to make it worth it and the additional cost and the weight and everything um just my preference a lot of people like them i i just I tried that one just to try a different style and see how it works. Um, so far it's been working pretty good. I'm sure it won't hold any heat really because the vent follows along the top right along with my body so I'm sure all the heat's rising. I didn't bring my thermometer out to check the outside and inside temperatures. I forgot to do it. Um, tarp held out great course. It got a little bit more of a storm about 1.30, 1 1.30 last night, a big loud crack of thunder and it kind of rumbled through the valleys and stuff down through here and then right after that it just started raining pretty hard but the wind never picked up really bad or anything but seam seal and all that stuff worked, you know, tarp, it, tarp was rained on all day and uh, never, never found a leak anywhere and I was checking it pretty good so, I don't know. Um, I don't know if I'm going to end uh, the video here or if I'm going to, uh, well, I don't know if I'm going to 
you know, maybe take some shots of taking this down and then end the video, or if I'm going to actually go do that hike, it's still, still got a little while before it gets light enough to go do it, so I'll have to wait and wait and see how, my, but right now my head feels like it's ready to explode, and I just want to, I just want to pack up and head home and, you know, try to deal with this headache, but I'll see how things go over the next hour or two. Okay, so my head headache I had is eased off some, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this trail. Um, I'm gonna go out here. I am right here. That's what the sign says. We had GPS before anybody ever knew about it. They always know where you're at. Um, so I'm gonna hike up this waterfall trail and uh, check that out. We didn't get enough rain. The creek over here is not uh, running or anything, so I don't foresee the waterfall running, but uh. Um, there's something working its way down here trying to get me. I don't know if it's a deer or a bobcat or something's up there. Um, and I was reading this, uh, dangerous areas may exist within park. Speaking of that, um, last night, uh, or well, early this morning, there was a, a tree fell. The wind wasn't blowing or anything, just a random tree, um, fell. And, uh, just uh, keep that in mind when you're camping. Uh, everybody, I hear a lot more people talk about it when they're hammock camping than tent camping, but either way, make sure you don't get set up around trees that are really iffy. Um, they could fall at any time like that. You know, it wasn't windy, it wasn't anything, it just, just fell. And uh, heck, there was a guy, I think on the PCT, um, year two years ago was hiking and a random tree just fell and got him so uh keep it in mind my video about setting up uh site selection and setting up a hammock and everything talks about you know looking out for trees and everything but last night was kind of a reminder it it could happen at any time you know so i'm gonna go do this trail used to do a lot of rock climbing down here in the Shawnee National Forest um, and then like this it's not showing up really well on the video but there's a um, not quite a chimney but uh, like a 90 degree angle where the rocks meet right through there I'd love to climb that I'm out of shape now I'm not in the shape I was in when I was doing a lot of climbing but uh be pretty nice. Pretty nice little climb. Something just scared the heck out of me in that tree right there. Right when I turned the camera off and turned around. There's a bobcat hanging out. If it was a turkey roosting in the tree, I would have seen it by now. It jumped down, but uh, might have been a cat. Hmm. Don't know. I set off the camera and turned and took about two steps and something jumped through those branches. Pretty, pretty freaking big. Oh well. I'd say it was a cat because a turkey would still be there on the ground. There are a lot of bobcats out here. That right up through there is more of a chimney. You know, like when I was talking about over there climbing, um, that's more of a chimney right there. I don't know how well it's showing up on the video, but it's kind of got like three sides, you know, kind of shaped like that. And you can just crawl up in, in there. Um, 
climb up in there. It's a, it's a lot easier climb than like climbing the face of a rock, but uh, sometimes it can still be pretty challenging depending on the texture of the rock and all that good stuff. I get out here and roam around I like see there's a little kind of little cave there and stuff and um, this trail kind of going up to the bluffs and everything and there's a pretty good cave right up in there um, I get out and roam around a lot of those places a lot more in the middle of winter time there's way too many snakes down here um, and just mean snakes like copperheads and rattlesnakes and water moccasins and all that kind of stuff and um, so I try to let them have it during the summertime and when it gets really really cold I then I get out there and kind of explore around it's all about sharing I talk a lot about um, myself not liking synthetic I mean uh, down bags um, because of the experience I've had uh, um, my experience is camping a lot of times you know my bag gets wet or damp or whatever so I just stick to synthetic uh, a place like this I've spent a lot of winter nights camped out under you know a little little overhang stuff like that and uh spent all around here in the shawnee national forest there's places like that and spent a lot of winter nights in in places like that build you a little fire and you're nice and dry just lay your sleeping bag on the ground and and uh um spend the weekend or spend the night or whatever uh, but yeah i used to love camping in places like that but then a lot of times you know bag gets damp and stuff and uh, from the moisture on the ground not so much in a place like that um, it's pretty dry but still there is moisture and dampness on the ground and uh, the experiences I had and the type of camping I like doing a lot of times my bag's going to end up getting wet to some degree so you know if you like down cool just uh, the way I camp uh, doesn't work for me. I was thinking um, a lot of times, you know, like I said, I camped in places like that shelter and stuff, and they're they're off the beaten path. They're little, little hidden spots. There's no trails to them or anything. You gotta. Just bushwhack your way through them, uh, through to get to them, and out in the middle of nowhere. And you know, this would be kind of cool too. Down there, a little farther, it's a little bit drier. Camp out underneath there, have the water there. That's pretty cool. Um, but anyway, my point is, uh, one thing I was thinking about last night, and I just got reminded of as I ran through a spider web here. Do you ever notice that? When you're, uh, if you're off trail and you're just bushwhacking, spider webs are very rarely a problem. But then if you're hiking a trail like this, they're everywhere. And uh, they rebuild them overnight and everything, but I don't know why that is. It's one of the great mysteries of life. Why spiders only build webs across trails and not just randomly in the woods I don't know if you let me know figure it out I mean if you let me know tell me this is the waterfall that I came down to and we got a lot of rain last night well, not a heavy volume just it rained quite a bit last night yesterday all day you know just just raining but not any serious volume so when there is a lot of rain you know that waterfall is running really 
really good and all the water pools up here and stuff and runs down the creeks and that's uh really beautiful if you could see it when it's running and you can work your way even though you're not supposed to but you can work your way and get up there back behind the waterfall and stuff and just uh had a feeling because none of the creeks were running or anything that we didn't get enough water and it's been dry here um for quite a while but uh I don't know, still a pretty cool place. Pretty cool. All right, so I made it down here um, and I'm gonna head down, head back to the parking lot and there's another trailhead going the other direction along some um, bluffs and everything. Place I've climbed a few times, uh, but I'm gonna head back down there and film some of that when I get down there I'm really hoping the waterfall I came here to Fern Cliff because I knew there's a forecast of uh, pretty good rain and I came here to Fern Cliff instead of going somewhere else hoping that you know we would get enough rain that this waterfall ball was flowing but uh, maybe next time so I got three choices here at the uh, trailhead there's Redmond, Redmond Trail. It's a half a mile. A lot of little bluffs and stuff to check out. And then over here is the Goreville Boy Scout Trail. Um, it doesn't really go around the uh, bluffs as much. And it's only 0.4 miles. Um, but as you can see the trail comes up through here and it kind of misses most of the bluffs there and then over here is the Hawks Cave Trail This is a Hawks Cave Trail, makes a loop, it's a mile, and uh, skirts along the bluffs a lot more. So, I think I'm going to do that one. <laughs> the sign here is talking about the untouchable, the untouchables. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be touching a copperhead or an eastern mess, so whoever he is. I'm not going to hang around long enough to ask him what his name is jumped a deer, actually two deers, up on top of this little hill right here. Let's see if I can get around and get a shot of them. They didn't go very far. That hill drops down just enough. I don't think I'm going to get a picture of them. Hmm. Oh, there he is. See them both? Too worried, they're just closing along. Hmm. Wish I would have caught them sooner. But I came around that corner and, you know, didn't see them so Too late. This is the Hawk's Cave.
Very big place. A lot of places like this. Everybody thinks Illinois, you know, cornfields and stuff like that, but down here in the southern, southern, southern part, um, there's a lot of areas like this. They're pretty common. Most people that's never been through or only been through Chicago, they just would never dream that we actually have hills and valleys and bluffs and all that good stuff, but oh well, we'll keep it our secret and everybody else can stay up in Chicago. to be a great little spot for an animal to hole up in, literally. It goes back in to the uh, left some, yeah, and uh, you can kind of see the other opening right there, but it makes a nice little place to call home. All these big boulders that have fallen down over the years. Pretty cool. I think I forgot to say something about it this morning, but last night I talked about using that sleeping pad. Um, trying to get used to doing that. And it uh, slipped on me last night. Um, I was laying like this, but then somehow the pad ended up laying like this. So I woke up and my back and shoulder were cold. Uh, and I couldn't get it to slide. For nothing I tried, it, it did not want to pivot around. I ended up having to get out and pivot it around and then get back in it. But uh, that's like the probably sixth or seventh night I've tried it. And uh, first night it's done that to me. I know it's a problem a lot of people talk about, but uh, yeah, um, I was just thinking about that. But uh, it it, uh, it worked down the mid, you know, temperatures last night about mid 50s kept me warm until I ended up off of it. But uh, I'll try now get it down in the 40s, see how good it does. Okay, I made it back to the car, and I really should be leaving because I got stuff to do. But, Redmond Trail is only half a mile, so I'm going to go do it. Okay, see this sign? This area only. Um, so, pay no attention to the sign when I show you later a spot that uh, we've repelled and climbed at.
took a few people back and lower down to uh, show them how to do some climbing. I've repelled this several times. It's pretty cool because it's got a, you can't really see it very well, but it's got an overhang. Um, so once you come off the edge, then it's, it's free fall down to about, well, actually right out here. We were, uh, took my wife out here one time, repelling and, and uh, we got down to this spot. So, like she was sitting there on the rock with the camera pointing straight up whenever I was rappelling down and, and uh, the free fall brought me like right to that rock. So it, it's a lot more of an overhang than it looks, but pretty cool, short little rappel. It's not very long, but um, the walk back up is a whole lot longer. None of the waterfalls are flowing. I got this one here and that bigger one there. I mean, right there. It's hard to point when you're looking through a camera. So this is one of the places I've taken um, people to learn how to climb. As you can see there's lots of handholds and stuff and then you get up to that kind of like that chimney up there and work your way up. Um, but fairly easy spot to uh, start learning. Alright, so I'm going to get off of here and uh, go climb around some of these rocks a little bit before I head home. Um, thanks for watching if you made it this far. And um, I'm going to try to hit a different place like this every time I go camping the next few times. So um, at least it, there's more scenery and stuff like that, you know. Instead of just going to a random pile of woods you know with nothing around so hopefully that'll help make it a little bit more enjoyable to see the scenery and stuff like that you know. but thanks for watching